Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read uh, quite a few verses. It's a word that sticks out in these verses that I'm going to read. You'll see it. Romans chapter number 8. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 28. Most of you go to that one. But we'll start at verse 28 and read quite a few verses. 8.28 of Romans. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it God that justified? Verse 34. Who is he that condemned? Is it Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, and who also make intercession for us? Yes. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, Amen. or persecution, Amen. or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, yes. in all these things, yes. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us say amen. amen. I think you notice the reoccurrence of the term things over and over again. Primarily in that opening verse, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And so I want to use for a message title tonight, Don't You Worry About a Thing. Don't you worry about a thing. There's a difference between being concerned and worried. It's a difference in being concerned and worried. Being concerned is considering something to be perhaps interesting, relevant, or even important when something is uh, that you're concerned about. But worry is to be uneasy about something. Troubled in mind. Worrying is like a self-inflicted punishment that you put on yourself unnecessarily. Worry is a waste of thoughts, time, and energy. In either case, too much concern or too much worry can become a distraction and divert the mind in a different direction. You could be on track and focusing on the things that you should be focusing on, but a thing comes out of nowhere and causes you to start to worry. And it diverts your mind in a different direction. Take no thought for your life. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? 
Who can change a thing by worrying about it? After you have worried about it, it's still too short or it's too long. It's not enough. You still don't have it after you've worried about it. You still need it. Nothing has changed. Worry is like a virus in a computer that pops up and it affects the whole performance of the system. We are familiar with the term antivirus a virus software and, and, and what it does. But we have to understand in this day in our relationship and walk with God, God's word is, is our antivirus for worry. In other words, to counter word, you have to remind you of what the word of God says. All things work together for good. If God be for us, who can be against us? Don't you worry about a thing. The word of God has all of us, it has all things covered. Especially when we have a relationship with him. What people worry about, for the most part, are simply things. An act, a care, a concern, a circumstance, a deed, an effect, an event, a happening, a manner, a matter, a message, an occasion, an occurrence, a purpose, a report, a request, a sake, a saying, a sentence, a sign, a soul, a spoken, a talk, a task, a that, their thought, thus, whatsoever, wherewith, which, a word, a work, or a thing, but simply put, we don't have to worry about wherever the source is of the thing because God has it coming. Some things that makes uh, the difference in a thing, if we could just get over a thing, sometimes if we could just get over a thing, sometimes if we could just do one thing, sometimes if we could just accept the thing, get rid of a thing, it would make a world of a difference in our lives. A thing may be something of the past that you are still trying to get over. A thing may be something of the present that you are currently dealing with. A thing may be something that has not even happened and may not ever happen, but yet you're worried about it happening. And it may not ever happen. A thing may not be something major, but it just may be too many little things that has captured our attention. Jesus says unto Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Things can affect you and I spiritually and naturally. A little thing can just upset us naturally or spiritually. A thing can keep you from eternal life. Jesus says unto the rich man, he says, one thing that thou lackest. He says, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come and take up your cross and follow me. And he was sad at the same, and he went away grieved, all because of one thing, one thing, one thing. On the other hand, if it's the right thing, a thing can bless us in so many different ways. God appeared to Solomon. He says, that's what you will. Solomon asked God for one thing. He says, give me wisdom to lead your people. And the Bible says the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this one thing. The Lord said, not only am I going to give you that one thing, but I'm going to give you the wisdom. I'm going to give you the understanding heart. And I'm going to give you riches. And I'm going to give you honor. And if you continue to uphold my word, I'm going to extend your life. All because he asked for the right thing. Yes, yes, yes. 
While Martha was worrying about many things, Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet to hear the word of God. We have a choice, especially when we have a life that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have a choice of exalting the thing that we're dealing with or we can exalt Jesus. We have a choice. Some things that bring pleasures may be exalted too much because of the enjoyment. And some things that bring trouble, they may be, a, be exalted too much because of the worry of it. In either case, we should not a thing to get our minds off the Lord. We ought to exalt Jesus, who's before and above all things, for by him all things were created that are in the heavens and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. All things are under his feet, and, he, and, he, and God has put everything under him. He's the head of all things that pertain to the church. Jesus should be exalted of all things. This is why, rather than worrying about a thing, I'm going to exalt Jesus, because he's the Lord of all things. You have to understand. The thing that I deal with does not, uh, does not change the fact that he's Lord. And he's the still the Lord of the thing. He's the Lord regardless of what I'm dealing with in my life. If I could just get to a place and maintain a mindset that I'm going to exalt Jesus regardless of the thing, regardless of the thing, then not only, hallelujah, will I be blessed, but somebody around me will be blessed as well. Because when you exalt Jesus, it not only helps you, but it helps those around you. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you do what you can now. But don't you worry about the thing, God. If you can change it, if you can fix it, if you can help your situation out, but don't, after you've done all that you can do, God, then you realize uh, that I'm not going to allow this thing that calls me to worry. Walk in the floor for something that's not going to change anyway. Don't you worry about a thing. God, it don't. There are many things in this life that a person could possibly worry about. The person who is not saved, the person who is not where they should be spiritually. Now I say to you, you ought to be worried about the coming of the Lord. Uh, I mean, it's, now if, you, if, if you're in that category, you should be, in fact, if you're not worried, uh, you've gotten too comfortable. So the person that's not where they should be spiritually, and they're not saved, they should be worried about the coming of the Lord to the point that they can't get rest until they do something about their spiritual situation. But we have to understand, as believers who are saved by the blood of Jesus, we are in a worry-free state of mind. But it's still up to us not to worry. The Lord guarantees peace, but he says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So even after God has given me peace, I have to keep my focus. I have to understand that there may be times when I drift away, but I got to bring myself back to a place that my mind is staying focused on Him. And because of this, I can escape the worry that my flesh tries to experience or want to experience because I trust Him. I don't understand. I don't know what is going to happen or how the thing is going to end up, but I know one thing. God knows what's best for me. And I can trust in that fact. 
We should not worry about the necessities of life. Jesus says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that we have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now you understand, before there are some things I'm concerned about. And some things I, 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 I want to change. But God is well aware of those things. He's well aware of what's happening in my life. In the affairs, the things that I, I, I want to change and the things I want to get better. And so I have to rely on this fact that God is saying, if I put him first, if I seek him first, then all those things that I'm concerned about, that God's going to work them out. He's going to give me a wisdom. He's going to give me a direction. He's going to help me manage and get through that situation because when I focus on him about then what I'm saying to God I'm putting you above these things and if God sees that you love him more than these things and trust him more than these things God knows how to take care of those things how do we that that just seem to get to us at times you have to come to a place in your life that my life belongs to Jesus and I'm I'm not going to let this little thing uh, disturb me. Uh, I'm going to get up uh, and I'm going to seek God even the more. Uh, I'm going to put for more energy into living or searching after him than trying to fix this thing. Uh, I've done all that I can do with this thing. Uh, I've done all that I can do for this thing. Uh, I put forth my effort and my energy. Now God, I'm going on and I'm going to give you the praise uh, because I know what I can't do, you will do. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. He's Lord of all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We should not be fearful of what is happening in this world. You watch the news and being in a big city like this, you know, with things that happening up. Uh, and you know these things that one after another soon, soon as they get through protesting about one situation here comes another one over and over and we have children and grandchildren and, and, and relatives and, uh, and we concern uh, but the Bible reminds us who is it that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. Or not. And so if we just focus on the goodness of the Lord and, and try to help the youth of our day, now, just make sure you're doing that which is good before God. You don't have to worry about anyone doing anything to you. Don't you worry about a thing when you're putting forth an effort to please God in every area of your life. Uh, by the psalmist who wrote, uh, he says, uh, now truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart, the psalmist says, but as for me, my feet almost are gone. He says, my steps had wild nigh slipped. He says, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He says, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. In other words, he was worried about it. He said, until I went into the sanctuary of God, he said, then I understood Therein. Now what the psalmist is saying, I know God is good to me. That's what he's saying. He says, but because of this one thing, he says, this one thing is bothering me. He said, the prosperity of the wicked is worrying me. The people that are doing wrong seem like they're getting away with it. He says, it seems like they are just getting away. He says, but when I came to God's house, God, in so many words, gave me a revelation. Revelation. What was the revelation? Uh, don't you worry about a thing. Uh, I'm going to take care of that. Uh, you just do what you're supposed to do. He almost slipped up. Uh, but he said, when God revealed it to me, uh, get your mind off of that thing uh, and just give God the glory, honor, and praise. Uh, and I'm going to Don't you worry about a thing. 